Okay, so in chapter three, there's this concept of exponential growth. Exponential growth can be positive or negative, and here you see an example of exponential growth in a positive direction. And this is the human population since 1776, obviously the birth of our nation, all the way up through uh, the late 90s to maybe it looks like 2000. So in any case, uh, you see that the growth has really accelerated uh, recently, and by recently I mean within you know the late industrial period after the Industrial Revolution. You'll notice that the linear growth would be represented by the dotted line. This exponential growth is a problem for any population, as we'll see in later chapters. Now when we take a look at uh, exponential growth in a negative direction, this is what it would look like. And it's basically a you know a curve. It's a piece of a parabola, if you will. And you'll notice that here in this case, it would this is what would happen to a population if you had a steadily increasing uh, death rate. And you know that I don't think there's much more to say about that. If this doesn't seem to be intuitive or in some way confuse it is if it is confusing to you in some way, please see me after class and we'll discuss how to read these charts. Here's a logistic curve where you see that it's not strictly exponential in any logistic curve, the first portion of it is exponential. It's this part that's exponential. And those students that had me last year, uh, we know we went through this pretty uh, vigorously. So the very first part of any kind of logistic curve is an exponential growth. However, what happens in nature is that you start to reach a plateau. And so with a logistic curve, you start to get this, this balance, this, this kind of dropping off. And that is the, that's the kind of the dis distinguishing uh, characteristic of a logistic curve, where it starts off like an exponential curve, but then it curves in the opposite direction and plateaus on. So that's a logistical growth. So here we have two equations to help define the two different kinds of curves, where you have here the the straight line or linear uh, equation, and here you have the exponential equation. Now, obviously, I hope at least it, at least I hope it's obvious. This is what makes it exponential, right? You have an exponent x to some exponent. As it turns out, the x is also known as the slope, right? Or the exponent is also known as the slope. And here you'll have, this is the slope of a linear equation where the y-intercept is a here and the y-intercept would be a there. So that's the two, you know, the comparison of the two curves the linear, uh, the linear curve versus the exponential curve. All right, so or linear equation versus the exponential equation. So let's take a look at an application of exponential growth. All right, well, I believe there's a mistake here, at least in either the way he writes it or uh, his math. But this section here, where it says that r is 2%, then k is 0 0.02, that would be wrong, right? Because if k is equal to, as he defines it here, r divided by 100, and you're saying r is equal to 2%, then it can't equal 0 0.02, right? It would be 0 .0002. Uh, in any case, we're not going to worry about that. Just remember that and k does equal uh, r divided by 100, so this part is correct. And let's just try to remember that moving forward. So when we're looking at this, this part here is correct, so let's keep that in mind. And n equals n times e to the xt, that's going to be important as well. So let's try to keep that in mind as well. Um, the natural constant is 2.71828. Remember that. Uh, we know that 
uh, n not. This should be n not, right? And so let's zoom in a second here. So if we look at this and remember that it's n not, oops, that's not true. It's n for any given amount of time is equal to n not times et, right? So it says here in this problem that in this problem set, it asks the question, what if we have a population 2003 of 6.3 billion and the growth rate is 1.36? And so uh, what would be, you know, can we estimate what N will be at 2020? So we know what we're starting with. That's here, right? There's your N naught, right, which is 6.3 times 10 to the ninth. That's where we get that number. And then uh, the NT is 2020 so what is it going to be in 2020 right so where do we get the K equals 0 0.0136 that's 1.36 divided by 100 that's 0 0.136 uh, 0 0.0136 so let's take a look at how we take the, those numbers and make it work so where do we get this number here uh, this this 6.3 um, you know I hope you understand that that 6.3 came from this here 6.3 billion that's why it's point ten to the ninth so that's this value that comes from this part of the word problem now when we're talking about e that's your natural number right that two point you don't ever have to remember 2.71828 because it's in your calculator as E, as you'll, you'll see it when we go over it when we do this in class. And you're going to have to use that E a lot in uh, environmental science. And so you have 0 0.0136 times 17 years. Where do we get 0 0.0136? Remember, we that was 1.36 divided by 100. That's because that's R divided by 100. That's where the K comes in. That's where this letter here is. So we're trying, that's what this number is here, right? And T is this one here. That's your T. That's the 17. Where do we get 17? 17 is 2020 uh, minus 2003 equals 17. 17 year difference. So we go ahead and we calculate this out. This, num this multiplication becomes this number here, right? This E is 2.17, 2.718, and it's of course that's to this, this uh, rounded up, rounded down uh, exponent. And what we when we do the math, we plug and chug into the calculator. What we get is 7.94 times 10 to the ninth. 10 to the ninth is billion, so 7.94 billion people in the year 2020. If we keep the growth rate of 1.36 per year. 1.36 percent per year so a doubling time for a quantity undergoing exponential growth so that's that's how we're that's how you're going to use this one way you're going to use it I'm going to say we're going to watch a couple of videos in class I'll have some problem sets for you but that's one way you're going to use it so that that's when you're given a, a certain time frame so 2003 2020 you're given the initial population of 6.3 billion that's your n naught, right? This is your n naught. This is your n at a given time. And this is in, in 2020. So, uh, and of course, you, and you're given the growth rate. So, if you're given all that information, you can figure out what the population at a given time. So, that population at 2020. So, the population at 2020 is going to be 7.94 billion given this particular growth rate okay so now we'll take a look at the doubling time for a quantity undergoing exponential growth right so how much time will it take to double is the question well, we're going to use a, a rule of 70s from now on so things will become a little easier although there's a little bit of a caveat it's a little little trick here and that's that whole percentage versus non-percentage which is what you know maybe that's one of the reasons the book is confused or perhaps I'm not reading it right but in any case the percent here okay uh, there's gonna be a little trick you're gonna have to know and we'll watch it in the video again in class 
So doubling time for a quantity undergoing exponential growth can be calculated by the following. 2nt equals 2 naught. All right, so now where do we get that? Where do you get that? Well, the deal is that in order to understand where you got that 2, you have to first think about, uh, you know, what does it, what he, I really don't understand that notation. But my, the derivation, as I understand it, is the following. That you have nt equals n naught uh, e, right, kt. Now, if I'm trying to find out how much time, I'm trying to find out kt, I'm sorry, ktd. So td, the doubling time, that's what that ktd is. I'm trying to find out kt, I'm trying to find td. I'm trying to figure that out. So I got to get that value on its own. So using algebra, I find nt over n naught, and that equals e k, and then t d. Right. Now, this ratio of nt over n naught, what does that really mean? Right. Well, that means I want that ratio to be twice. I want it to be doubled. Right. I want it doubled. That's the point. Right. So this number, nt, the, the, the whatever it is, uh, versus what, you know, the ratio of what it is now, what it will be then to what it is now, where we started from to where we end up, that ratio, I want it to be 2. See, no matter what nt is, no matter what a naught is, let's say a naught is 4, n0, n to the 0 is 4, or n0 is 4, and t, let's say, would have to be 8. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. Okay, that's uh, simple. That's a 2. So now let's say it's a million. So let's say we start off with a million. Well, I want to know t. I want to know what, how much time it's going to take to get doubled. So what's double a million is 2 million. So this, this and t would be 2 million divided by a million is 2. So no matter what the values, the ratio is going to be 2. And that's where this number comes in, right here. That's where this 2 comes in. So this, to me, doesn't make any sense mathematically, and I'm confused in all kinds of sort of ways uh, as to what's going on there. So I wouldn't draw it, I wouldn't choose to draw it in this way. I wouldn't choose that notation myself. Just know that it's 2 equals the natural log E, K, td in order to get this td by itself again remember what my goal is my goal is clear i need to get to i need to know the time it takes to double that's the that's the variable i want to know the answer to i've gotten rid of my nt and n not just by using a little logic and so now my question is how do i get td by itself well the way i get an exponent down from the way i get an exponent down from its base is I take the log of it and since this log is e is two the base is 2.718 I'm going to use the natural log uh, so let me explain quickly that if I have the number you know 10 to the fourth power and I take the log base 10 just regular log base 10 so if you push log in your calculator it automatically goes to 10 right then that's going to equal 4 if I take the log base 10 of a number 10 to the 10th, then that number is going to be 10. So that exponent is literally brought down by taking the log. And it's just uh, a way I think of it anyways. So, okay. So the, given that, when we're, de when we're dealing with natural log, when we're dealing with a number that's 2.718, base 2.718, taken to some exponent I don't care what it is let's just use the word number three then the natural log ln which stands for natural log and that's how it's shown on the calculator usually you'll see the no that number is going to be three so no matter what this crazy number is here if you take as long as this is the base of the kind of log that you're doing then the exponent is the answer all right, so remember that as we go about doing the rest of this. I should try to erase this.
All right. So remember that as we go on with this. So knowing that, hopefully you understand that I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides, because what I do to one side, I do the other. E, K, T, and D. And when I do that, the natural log of 2 ends up being this number. And then I end up bringing that down. And by the way, that's where this all came from, right? The natural log of 2 is equal to, then natural log of 2 is equal to, this is the net, this, these two things canceled each other out. And all I'm left with is K, T, D. So the natural log of the number 2, right, is equal to K, T, D. Now, the natural log of the number 2 happens to be 0.693. So that's going to be a constant. Why is 0.693 going to be a constant? Because it's the doubling of whatever it is. So because of the way the equation set up, where you have nt on this side, this we're looking for when this ratio doubles, this ratio number, the values are irrelevant because I'm always this ratio is what the one the answer I'm looking for is always going to be when this ratio equals two so the natural log of two is always going to stay the same because doubling means two so I have 0 0.693 is always going to stay the same so this value stays the same 0 0.693 so the only value then that changes in this equation oh, well so let's go ahead let me go ahead and fi uh, finish this then so 0.693 equals KTD. Well, what's K? It's, it's going to be R divided by 100. But first, what I want to do is I want to isolate it, right? I want to go ahead and take that KTD, because remember, I'm still trying to get this TD by itself. So if we take a look at what he did, what they do here, and I think they're pretty good at doing this now. K is R over 100. I go ahead and... Let me go ahead and do the math over here so that this resolves itself a little clearer. So let's go ahead and do, all right, so we have on one side of the equation, we have KTD. And on the other side of the equation, we have 0 0.693. Well, if I, dissolve, if I divide both sides by K, both sides by K, then I get TD by itself finally. After all this, I get TD by itself on the time it's going to take me to double. It's 0 0.693. But remember, what is K? K is R divided by 100. So I can take R and divide it by 100. They usually draw it in lowercase r, which is another issue I have with this. I wish people would just keep it all the same. It would make life a lot easier, but whatever. Divided by 100. Well, remember what we said earlier. We want to invert and multiply, right? So you take, go ahead and take 0.693. It's going to be over 1. And this is going to be times 100 over R, which is going to be equal to 69.3 divided by R. And that's where he gets this this value here that's where this comes from it's 0.6 is 69.3 and it's always going to be 69.3 and that's kind of a key point here and the key point and it's and hopefully it's clear to you because this is where the rule of 70 comes in obviously the right they're rounding 69.3 to 70 is to figure out the double rule it's a rule of 70 when we're doubling Right, when we're doubling. Again, when we're doubling, this 0 0.693 is always going to be constant because it's the natural log of 2, and 2 is the ratio that we want. So 0 0.693 is always going to stay constant. And so therefore, when we're doubling, it's always going to be about 70 divided by R. So it's about 70 divided by R. So whatever R is, well, 
that gets it, it if we take 70 divided by it we'll get our number now that's true if r is given to you in a percentage all right and this is kind of a a, a kind of a tricky rule and we'll go over it in a video then uh, that we'll watch tomorrow so if they if you're given r the rate of the growth rate and again it'll probably be a small r given you given to you in percentage then you're going to want to use 70. if r instead is given to given to you in a decimal the way they did in the beginning of the problem the way they did up here if someone says to you you know r is two point well, plus zero two let's say then they're probably not going to, uh, you know, well, it could it could happen that way. So if they give it to you as R is 0 0.02, or in this case, R is whatever, but it's not a percentage, if they give it to you in a decimal, then you're not going to use 70. You're going to go ahead and you're going to use 7. So this is kind of a trick. Um, it has to do with the math, and it has to do with if it's not, you know, you wouldn't divide it by a hundred and therefore you would never get to seven uh, to seventy you'd get to seven uh, but in any case it's not important what's important is that you understand that the rule of 70 works and if r if you're given r if you're if you're using r as a percentage well, let me go ahead and take that reduce the size of that if r is given to you as a percentage if R is a percentage, then you're going to take 70 and divide it by R. If R is given to you as a decimal, then you're going to take 7 and you can divide it by R. And what this gets you is the amount of time it takes to double a population all right so that's that's key all right that took a while um, we'll have to finish the the lab discussion on residence time tomorrow in class uh, I'll try to get that movie out to you uh, soon I do have some blanks of the lab that whole modeling and global uh, global carbon cycle and climate change uh, papers. I know that the the whole uh, schematic of filter feeders to predators to deposit feeders, etc., was a little confusing. Hopefully, this helped explain uh, and it helped you understand how this doubling time thing works and how the exponential growth equation is going to work. Uh, we're going to keep working with the exponential growth equation. I'm going to have some summary sheets for you in class, and I'm going to have uh, some uh, problems we'll work out together in class. But we'll figure this out. We'll have a nice little regiment where anytime you see a certain growth equation or uh, someone asks you to double it, you'll know what factors you need. You'll know your, your equation cold by then, uh, and you'll be able to calculate what you need to calculate. And, of course, we'll get practice time with the calculators. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.